Hello everyone and welcome. In this video, I'm very excited to be checking out the 2015 Aston Martin Vanquish. I am at the Aston Martin facility in England and I have just finished up a factory tour, uh, saw some of the manufacturing, and so now I get to take out the Vanquish, the flagship model, just about uh, $300,000 MSRP. And I'll be honest, I'm pretty nervous about this. This is my first time driving a right-hand drive vehicle and my first time driving on the left side of the road. So, you know, it's gonna be a bit of a mind game, but what better way to do it then with a V12 under the hood. So we'll go ahead and start it up. So here's the key, and you simply insert this into a slot in the center, and it starts right up. Beautiful sound. That's a 5.9 liter V12. They call it a six liter V12. Um, basically it's 5,935 uh, cubic centimeters. So, you know, that gives you, uh, if you round to the nearest liter, six liters, I guess what that's what they went with. Uh, most would probably classify this as a 5.9. Regardless, not that important. Uh, 568 horsepower, 465 pound feet of torque sent to an eight speed automatic transmission. So let's go see how that feels. Uh, and hopefully not get in any trouble. As far as visibility, this pillar on the right kind of blocks out your right uh, vision. It's probably something I'm just not too used to just because I'm used to driving on the other side. The front windshield is a bit narrow, but uh, nothing uncommon for a car of this caliber. And looking out the rear window actually isn't too bad uh, if it's not, you know, totally raining and fogged up. So as far as this interior, uh, pretty much everything in here is leather wrapped. It's a deep purple, looks pretty awesome. Um, and you've got your center controls all, all here. So you've got your gear selection and all the things like that. You can select manually with the paddle shifters uh, simply by tapping the right uh, paddle shifter. That'll put it into first and then you can hold it and it'll put it back into automatic. There are also different driving modes. So you've got uh, the normal, you can put it in sport um, and then you've got different damping settings as well. So you can have uh, that into to adaptive damping sport mode, uh, there's normal mode, and then if you hold it down, it'll put it into track mode, so you'll get a bit more aggressive damping, uh, a bit firmer. You know, this is on winter tires, and so with having winter tires, usually you'll start to get a little bit of a rubbery feel in the steering, um, and honestly, it feels, you know, extremely precise, which is pretty surprising to me. I notice a huge difference in my own car when I switch over to winter tires, so I'd be curious to see how this would feel with summer tires, uh, because honestly, it feels extremely responsive, as is with these winter tires on here. things you notice is the tachometer uh, goes in the reverse direction so uh, counterclockwise rather than clockwise just kind of an Aston Martin thing now I'm told that during braking uh, using the left hand uh, paddle shifter if you hold it down it'll actually put it in the optimum gear uh, rather than stepping down through the gears it'll just bang it right into the one uh, which will give you the optimum RPM so you can hear that there Wow <laughs> This is a fantastic transmission. I've tested it before uh, in the F-Type, and one of the unique things that Aston Martin did with this transmission, they were the first ones to put it in the transaxle. So the transmission's actually in the back, uh, and so what that does is, you know, it gives a better weight distribution. So this car actually weighs about 51% in the front, 49% in the back, so a really nice uh, distribution for the weight. You know, it's super quiet in this interior. These roads honestly don't look like they're very smooth at all, and it's raining, um, you know, so there's gonna be a bit of noise, and winter tires tend to be pretty loud in general, but, you know, I don't really hear the rain at all, um, and I hear a little bit of tire noise, I don't really hear any wind noise, and I've been getting up to some decent speeds. So as far as the interior quietness, I mean, as you would expect, this is a luxury grand touring vehicle, uh, but it's exceptionally quiet in here. It's actually really comfortable as well, you know, this road does have a decent amount of bumps and things in it, and I'm not really getting much vibration through the seat, so it does a really nice job of damping that out. Oh, and it just pulls so much. <laughs> probably a good thing there's traffic in front of me because I've got so much power under there. Zero to 60 
in 3.6 seconds. And that's one of the changes uh, for this year uh, was that they added this eight speed transmission. And what that did was it took down the zero to 60 from 4.1 to 3.6. So pretty quick. Uh, and that was just a transmission change. They've also, because of the new transmission, uh, they've added um, you know new gear ratios. There's two more gears uh, versus the previous version. And because of that, top speed has gone from the 180s up past 200 miles per hour with just the transmission. Another change they've made is with the engine management system. So there's two engine management systems. One of the things that's kind of unique about this, uh, there's one engine management system on either side for each cylinder bank. And somehow this has helped them squeeze out an extra three horsepower um, by independently controlling those cylinder banks. And each of those communicate directly with the transmission. Um, so they've done something tricky there uh, in order to squeeze out some extra horsepower. Pretty cool. Uh, and you know, this transmission's phenomenal. The shift speeds are just unreal and it's super smooth. One of the things that's really impressive about this is that it's a planetary automatic. And yet, you know, if I were to get in this car and no one told me, I would guess that it was a dual clutch just because of how quick these shifts are. Also very smooth. It's just a super, super nice transmission that ZF did with the uh, eight speed. One of the other things that I got to see during the factory tour was the NVH panels that they put in here. Uh, and so basically these are these like putty-like uh, things that they'll place within uh, you know, the, the body of the car and they're putting them on locations which are gonna have vibration. And so part of that, what that's doing is that you know I'm really not feeling any vibration in my feet, in the seat. Um, it's pretty amazing how little vibration I feel. Uh, you know, I, I daily drive a Subaru STI and I feel absolutely everything. Everything is vibrating. Um, and you know, my whole body is always experiencing some form of that. This has done an extremely nice job of cutting out that unwanted vibration. Um, and you know, you still have the feedback that you want from the steering, uh, but you don't feel the vibration through the seat or through the pedals just from driving over the road. Unbelievably quick once you get you know let out on your own and there's no cars in front tons of torque you know you do notice that it's mostly on the top end that said there's plenty available throughout the whole rev range uh, but you definitely notice it pull harder once you do get into the higher rpms and I believe peak torque is somewhere around 5500 rpm uh, so it is a bit up there but like I said you know this is a huge engine 5.9 liters v12 it's got plenty of torque down low as well <laughs> as I just demonstrated Oh man, that sound. I guess part of me thought that this would be a bit more frightening than it really is. I mean, honestly, it feels extremely well controlled. It doesn't feel like it's out of hand at all. Uh, you know, when I put my foot down on the throttle, I don't feel like it's getting really squirrely. I mean, I've seen the traction control kick in, uh, but it never feels like it's something that I couldn't handle. And that surprised me quite a bit because of how much power it has. Super smooth power delivery. It doesn't kind of just slam the back. Uh, you know, it does a nice job of easing into it uh, and then accelerating through as you lay your foot down. But it is surprising to me that it hasn't been more challenging uh, to drive it. I would have expected it to be, um, I guess, a bit more wild. And I don't want to say that it's not wild. It's certainly capable, uh, but it doesn't feel unapproachable, which some of the other cars I've gotten in kind of feel like unobtainable as far as their performance limit. This kind of feels like it gives you enough feedback that you feel comfortable driving it uh, at speed. So thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below and be sure to check out my factory tour of the Aston Martin facility.